he's very cute. Oh my god. I so want to get him closer. Ah, I can with my camera. Okay, he's almost there. I'm really on looking me. forward to seeing this. Yeah, he's almost there. Look. Here you are. Oh, it is. It is. It is. A net casting spider. Yeah. See if you can zoom in on those eyes. Mm. Oh, look at that. You are just a gorgeous face. That is Dianopus subrufa. One of the world experts is uh, Lisa Chamberlain. She comes from Ingia Agnarsson's lab in Vermont. And she was staying with us just a couple of weeks ago. And she's running around Australia looking for these spiders. And she was saying, I haven't even got one yet. Oh, I'm going to be in trouble. I've only got three weeks in Australia. I haven't even found one. And I said, you should get down uh, to our creek and you'll find one. She looked around and she saw one and she moved towards it. It had its net out and everything. Oh. And, and then she disturbed something on the ground nearby and it ran up the tree <laughs> to, uh, and, and she didn't find it. This is probably that very same spider. <laughs> Well, it uses its large central eyes, which reflect blue, and night. And it's got a net on the edge of its tarsi, which are basically toes. And uh, it holds it between its first four legs, and when it sees something, it throws it over the prey. And it has to see it really well in order to be able to do that. Its eyesight is so good, it can see the moon. And only jumping spiders and, and, and this spider have eyesight that good. But it's got two different eyes, which are the big ones compared to jumping spiders, because they've got the two in the middle. This one has got two at the back. It can't use its eyes during the day, so it digests its retinas. That is like got to be the most amazing fact. And every evening it regrows them again so it can see at night. It was blue. Oh. It was a blue spider and it was upside down and so the blue back was camouflaged against the blue sky and then the top of it is camouflaged against the, the twigs and the leaves. It's sort of red and green and so it had this incredible camouflage and so I thought it was interesting. Sent a picture to Robert and he said that's a really important mm. spider we need that for, for the collection. Uh, could you collect it for me and that's kind of what gave me the feeling of oh anyone can do science. So it's just a little light bulb moment, you know. Mm, fantastic. After doing uh, trees, I started seeing all of the, the bugs. I know that entomologists don't like calling them bugs. Some of them are bugs. Some of them are true bugs. True bugs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, let's call them insects, or as I like to call them, six-legged spiders. Uh -huh. Six-legged arachnids. Uh, and so, but they're pretty. And you've got the parent bug that cares for its young after they hatch out. And you've got the, um, the harlequin bug, oh, which is beautiful, beautiful blue uh, iridescent mm. colours. And you've got um, weevils, which are the biggest group in the biggest family. You know, they're, they're in the, the beetle family. Yes, with and, long snouts. And with long snouts. I love them. And, and then, I noticed spiders and while I could get the names of all of these other things, there uh -huh. were spiders that I could just come on every day and I find every day and people said, no, no, we don't know what that one is. And they said they knew about it kind mm. of generally, but no, that hasn't got a name. No, that hasn't got a name. And it was again and again. And so I said, well, is there any books? You know, I said, Surely there must be a good book on spiders that I could look up. And they said, oh, there's been some that were done about 1980, 1970 and 1980. And they're probably around the best that we've got. And I said, well, there needs to be a new one. And they said, well, Rob, Dr. Rob, you should do one. It's incredibly natural. It's connected to really good natural places. Taylor Range over there, then the Onmogra Army Reserve, which has never been cleared. Then it goes up to Diagula Range National Park. And then across there is Mount Kutha. And then that goes, and it's integrated and connected uh, all the way through, all around. And this is where all those tongues of native bush come down and meet. 
and so the waterway creates a wildlife corridor and you can basically see a representative sample of everything that's in this type of country in South East Queensland you can just find it right here in the gap in the suburbs if you want to rehabilitate something you just go and look at a remnant bit which is as close as possible to where you are that gives you guidance on how you need to restore it and you get your seed and your cuttings from local provenance you know you try to get everything as close as possible so that you're not introducing material from far away and you try to do your control phase first you try and stop the weeds from coming back uh, by planting really vigorous things in the ground cover like the mandras which are just the mm -hmm. most useful re rehabilitation plant ever mm. you know they are the, the absolute key to your restoration actually surviving and growing so some people could do pioneer trees but that doesn't leave any complexity because the ground cover never establishes mm.